Hey, this is Jordan from Jersey, and this is what I thought of the comics I read the week of September 23rd, 2009. As you can probably hear, it's uh, windy and rainy outside, and you, you can probably also hear that I'm getting over a cold, so I apologize. That's why everything was late this week, but uh, hey, what can you do? Um, before I get into the comics over this week, I want to give a big shout-out to Half Hour Wasted and the Legion of Dudes. Um, they put up my link on their podcast, and I really appreciate that. You can check out those podcasts at hhwlod.com. That's hhwlod.com. Um, they talk about comics, movies, all that kind of stuff. If you like my uh, show, you'll like them. But let's get into the first book that I read. This book actually came out several weeks ago. Um, I mentioned <clears throat> when it did, my shop was sold out. That's why I didn't get any copies, but it got it now, and it was well worth the wait. War of Kings, Who Will Rule, the one shot. And uh, I must say, as, as good as this issue was, my favorite thing has very little to do with the actual writing. Uh, if you look right there, that's Gladiator in the center, uh, a character that before War of Kings I couldn't care less about. Let's just be honest, he's a dumb-looking character. But what Abnett and Lanning have managed to do over War of Kings is turn him, um, characterization-wise, into an awesome three-dimensional character who you can care about, who you can, uh, you can understand their motivations. So they've turned him into an awesome character that way. It was very cool to see in this issue. <clears throat> and granted it, was, granted, it was because it was morning, but he, they gave him this awesome new uh, costume. And I hope it sticks around, <coughs> sticks around long past uh, his mourning process for Leandra. And he just keeps that as a main costume because that was really awesome. Story-wise, this comic, which I believe is double-sized, focuses on uh, the outcome of War of Kings. And uh, quite frankly, I wish they had released it as a... Uh, the final issue of War of Kings, rather than its own one-shot. Um, yes, the major knockdown, drag-out fight happened at the end of War of Kings, um, but this denouement would have, I think, would have fit just fine in the main title and not as its own separate spin-off. Um, but it focuses much more on the politics and the <clears throat> and the Inhumans and Kree, uh, I don't know if you want to call it annexing of uh, the Shi'ar Empire, but whatever you want to call it. It focuses on that, and who is going to rule the Shi'ar, uh, who is going to be, I don't know if regent is the right term, but who is going to be uh, their leader, even though the Kree and the Inhumans are in charge, who is going to be the actual figurehead at the top of the hill, if you will. Um, so that's what we find out in this issue. Very good issue overall. If you have not checked it out yet, go back and uh, find that one on the shelves. So let's stay in the Marvel Cosmic Universe and go to Guardians of the Galaxy issue 18. And as you can see on the cover, you have the, uh, I believe it's year 3000, or 3009, something like that, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, two issues ago, we had the whole story of half the team of the Guardians of the Galaxy going into the future, meeting this team, sending a message back to the past, or to our modern day cosmic universe, and uh, more or less saving the day that way. But when they fell into the sun at the end of that issue, it wasn't exactly clear what was going to happen. So then we spent the next issue with the other half of the team that had stayed in the modern day, and this issue we are back with the team that went to the future. So what happened? Well, they're kind of skipping across the pond of time, if you will, and seeing a bunch of possible futures of the Marvel Universe. So in this issue, even though we have one specific team, and we focus on one specific version of the future team, we do get to see uh, several different ones of those. And by the end of the issue, even though our team is still in the year 3009, and I double-checked it is 3009, um, the story has come around to the Adam Magus, I believe is how you say it, storyline from last issue with the current team. Uh, so it looks like those stories are starting to come together, even if they are separated by a millennia. Uh, hey, it's a great book, as always. Check out Guardians of the Galaxy. Nothing else I can really say about that. Next up, we'll go to Marvel Zombies Return, issue 405. Uh, next week will be the finale, but I am happy to say that although issue 2 was a letdown, as I've mentioned before, issues 1, 3, and now 4 are all fairly good. Uh, this particular issue takes place in an alternate World War Hulk. Um, I didn't actually read the regular World War Hulk. I read a couple of the tie-ins just because I was already reading those books, but uh, not a big fan of the Hulk and hadn't been reading the... Planet Hulk stuff, although I hear it's excellent, but, uh, so I had no reason to, to follow. I do know what happens. He fought the Sentry, all that. Basically, same thing here happens here, only you have the added problem, if you will, of the zombie contagion. Now, slight spoilers for this conversation. 
for Marvel Zombies Dead Days, and also this issue. Because I want to discuss something here. <coughs> In Marvel Zombies Dead Days, it was revealed, if I remember correctly, it's been a while since I read it, that the uh, Marvel Zombies universe that we know was created when a alternate century busted through the, you know, the wall between universes and came into the Marvel Zombies universe and started the infection. In this issue, we see the creation of the zombie century. Now, there's nothing for sure that says that this is the same zombie century. However, if it is, we've just seen the creation of a paradox, which time travel paradox, I prefer when there aren't paradox, but hey, what can you do? It was still interesting. And someone else caught it too I was talking with online. Um, don't know. This, this could be how the Marvel zombie universe started in the Marvel zombie universe, which was created by... Eh, it's confusing. But like I said, good issue. Um, except for issue number two, this whole series has been pretty good. So hopefully the conclusion next week, uh, two days really, it's Monday. I don't know when you're watching this, but it's Monday before the comics come out. Hopefully issue number five is awesome. And next up we have Ender's Shadow Command School, issue one of five. Now, if you aren't reading the Ender's Game and Ender's Shadow series, uh, Kind of might be kind of hard to understand. Ender's game focuses on this kid, Ender, um, Andrew Wigan, who goes to space to be trained as a commander um, that, against basically bug aliens that attacked us once before, might attack us in the future. Um, Ender's Shadow focuses on this kid, Bean, who's also in the same school, and you, you basically get to see the same story, but from two radically different points of view. Now, in the first two series, uh, Ender's Game and Ender's Shadow Battle School, uh, they were very separate. Um, Bean didn't even get to space until, like, issue four, maybe five. Um, and, they, and the two series didn't intersect till like, the last panel or two of uh, the issue fives of those two series. In this series, and this is not really a knock um, because it's necessary, but there was some... Uh, dialogue and panels that crossed over between Ender's Shadow Command School number one and Ender's Game issue number one. Um, I don't know. <laughs> for, for some real weird reason, it just comes off as, hey, couldn't they write two different things? Whatever. Uh, both series are great. I, I would recommend picking them up, but it might seem kind of odd that you're getting the same dialogue bubbles in two different books. Um, and, and it's only for you know a page or two. Um, it's one specific scene that, that crosses over quite a bit, but uh, hey, good books. Check them out. And next up, we have The Return of the Black Cat in The Amazing Spider-Man, issue 606. And my hat is off to Mr. Joe Kelly. Uh, I laughed out loud several times reading this issue. Um, I generally like his writing. I'm not always floored by it, but uh, the, the dialogue and the conversations, especially in a couple of key scenes in this book, was uh, was hilarious. So good writing, decent artwork, The Return of the Black Cat. It's a fun issue all around. Check it out. And we'll finish things off today with Avengers, The Initiative, issue number 28. Love that cover, by the way. Another great pop propaganda-style cover. They've been doing that the last few issues. Um, this issue is one gigantic fight, uh, for the most part. The AWOL initiative uh, team left, left, left the initiative. Uh, they're sick and tired of... Norman Osborn and everything he's been doing. Uh, they go to rescue, I believe it was Sentry and a couple other people who decide to also defect from the initiative. And man, there was a lot of obscure characters punching each other in this issue. It was great, don't get me wrong. But wow, there was some uh, <laughs> there was some big fights. Here's some of the people participating. Here's some more of the people participating. A little more of the people participating. Oh, and look, some extra punching, just for good measure. Well, that is it for the comics I read the week of September 23rd, 2009. Once again, don't forget to check out Half Hour Waste and Legion of Dudes if you have a, a love of podcasts as I do. You like these guys. Um, it's clean, family-friendly stuff. Check it out. See you next week.